It's 30 years since Merton Colliery closed, but now this forgotten part of East Durham has become prime Ken Loach territory. The veteran director has set his new film here, The Old Oak, and as the name suggests, much of the action takes place in a boozer just down the road. Okay, here we go then. And we're okay. turning over. That worked really well. That worked very well. Welcome back to the North East. You've come back for a third film. I know, I can't think why, why. <laughs> Ken Loach is the master of social realism cinema. He set his previous two films on Tyneside. So what has made him return to the region for what may well be his last full-length feature? It's a good place and, and we've done two films that um, you know, ended in a certain way and, and we just felt we needed to do one that had some optimism as well as showing all the difficulties. Who's first in this queue? I am. Do you mind if this young lass signs on first? Both in Daniel Blake and Sorry We Missed You, we saw the, the cruelty of the benefit system and the, and the exploitation of the gig economy. And so, but we've got to find something, otherwise we're putting our heads in the gas oven and we don't have to do that. His latest film is about two communities coming together the locals from a Durham pit village and refugees from war-torn Syria. When the pit shut, nothing replaced and communities were destroyed. And the people who come from a war, well, you can imagine the traumas they've had. So the two communities meeting each other and finding a way to survive, if it works, should give us some hope. OK, and we're turning over. OK, we're turning. Well, we're now in Horden, which is just a few miles away, and this is another former mining village. And along with its neighbour, Easington Colliery, it's been used as another location in the film. This street in particular is being used to show us where the Syrian families are being housed. The film is about what happens when you place a community that's already been displaced into a, another community which has been uh, decimated by the lack of industry. But it's, it's mainly seen through the eyes, the story is told through the eyes of the people who are habitués of the pub, the Old Oak. Oh, what are you doing? Well, I'll give you three guesses. And then board it there, very good. Uh, and board. Hi. Yeah, my name's Dave Turner. I love you. On cue. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure actually. Uh, oh, it's just as a, a latent guy up on top of the fridge. Dave is a retired firefighter and he's been cast in the lead role as TJ, who owns the old oak. It is terrifying. There's no other word to describe it, but because it's Ken Loach and because the people around him, they give you the not to say the confidence, but that they make you believe that you can do it. And that's the only reason why I'm here. And, and no, no marigolds, no marigolds. You, you're a journey lad, remember? Okay. I genuinely don't have a clue what I'm doing. I have noticed you wandering around the set with a oh. sort of slightly dazed look in your eyes. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's a mixture of confusion, incredulity. You're pinching yourself, aren't you? Oh, every day. On this daunting journey with him is his Syrian co-star, also an unknown. What's it like being in this film? It's so inspiring. Uh, it's so inspiring, yes. So I think you're needed on set. <laughs> you better go. But I have a lot of words to talk about Ken. He's a great, humble, very human man, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think Ken needs you now. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so very much. much. And with that, it's time to get into character and act natural. Serving away. Okay, then you go to the queue. How's the filming going? <laughs> well, we're about two thirds of the way through. Some of the scenes are quite tricky, like today. People eating because their appetite will last about 20 minutes, and then when they've eaten, it's gone. So it's a tricky one to manage. Don't eat any more. Today they're filming quite a complicated scene, it involves most of the cast and in this scene two communities, the locals and the Syrians come together and feast in what's the only public space left in the town. Given the circumstances of these 
to traumatised communities, this becomes a place of uh, it's a contested territory. So I suppose it all comes to fruition here in the Old Oak, where a group of the community have said, come and eat with us. And very much inspired by what happened during the miners' strike is the key idea that if people eat together, they stick together. There's a lot of Syrian <laughs> yes, food around. There's a couple of surprised faces of youngsters who have seen humus and tabouleh for the first time. Yeah, but that's all part of the mischief. And it's not just the food that's authentic. So are the extras. Sisters Rabia, Hasna and Saba came here as refugees. What's the experience been like? I mean, your first film with Ken Loach, that's something, isn't it? It is It is amazing, to be honest. It's the real story of most of the Syrian family. So it's um, similar to our story, how we came here and how we are living here as well, how we face like some good people in the area we live here in Durham and bad people. I remember the first day, I felt myself like... Uh, like a butterfly, <laughs> Come. I was falling, flying, flying. I, I feel rest my soul. Wow, that's quite an effect Mr. <laughs> Loach has had on you. So listening to Jamie and um, they've worked really well, so thank you very much. From casting close to reality to coaxing out those instinctive performances, the Loach approach is unique. And now I've had to come away from the filming to show you this. This is the holy grail of any Loach film. It's the full script that I've been interested with. And these pages are only revealed to the actors on a need-to-know basis. I don't get the script for the following morning. So I come in not knowing what I'm going to be doing. It just really keeps you mentally on your toes. You can't, you can't for a win one minute just settle. But this time next year, you could be a film star. <laughs> no, no, um, ne this time next year, I, I don't know what I'll be, but I certainly won't be a film star. But no, I mean, um, there's no way in God's green earth would I put myself through this again with anybody other than Ken Loach. So, no, this is, this is me done when this is done. To be fair, he might be done too. This could be his last film. Well, that's all, also part of the responsibility of feel. You don't want to be seen as the person who, you know, stunk out his last film. Yeah, okay, yes, that, that seems very natural. That works really well. Which brings us to a grey and rather delicate area. Ken Loach will be 87 by the time this film is released, but it's very hard to imagine him stopping. Uh, so many stories here, yeah. I know you There's want so to There's so many tell. stories. No, I think there reaches a point when, um, when you have to accept the inevitable and um, you know, hang up your, whoever film directors hang up. <laughs> We've been here before. Is yeah. this going to be your last film? Yeah, I, I do, who knows, but I can't imagine another one at the moment. You always say that though, Ken. Well, yeah, but there comes a time when <laughs> Father Time takes its toll, you know. But anyway, let's well, see. Well, good luck with the rest of the film. Thanks so and, much. And um, I'll see you later. Okay. See Go you and later. have your sandwich. Okay. <laughs>